Hello learners, it's my pleasure to welcome you again to our today's session. We will be introducing a new topic, which is introduction to risk and return. Introduction to risk. Introduction to risk and return. Introduction to risk and return. This is a new topic that was introduced in the financial management syllabus in the year 2018. So we are going to uh, start off by defining the term risk. What is risk? Risk may be defined as the potential potential for unfavorable potential for unfavorable returns potential for unfavorable uh, returns so risk has a special meaning in finance whereas the dictionary may define risk as danger in finance we define risk as potential for unfavorable returns, which may be occasioned by variability, variability of, of returns on investment, returns on investment. When an investor, when you invest in an asset when you buy a financial instrument expecting to earn a return of say this is expected return expected return of say 20 percent expected but uh, that is after say one year after one year, expect you expect 20% on um, an investment like, say, a share. You buy a share, expecting to get return of 20% after one year, but you actually, actually um, earn 15%. So the actual if the actual return is 15%, instead of what you expected, uh, 20%, you see there is a variation here of 5%. So that would mean such an investment is a risky investment. Risky investment. But if you are to earn, say, um, 5% instead of 20, then you see there is a variation there of 15%. That would mean that share is more risky than the first one. So risk is a potential for unfavorable returns, for unfavorable returns. But where the, the, the actual actual return is equal to the expected return okay if you are expecting if you are expecting 20% return 20% return expect expected return. If the expected return is at 20% on investment and the actual return turns out to be 20%. You invested in a share, you invested in a bond, you invested in an asset, then and uh, you are expecting to earn a certain return of say 20%. And it turns out that you earned the 20% 
then we say such an investment is risk free that is a risk free investment meaning there is no risk no risk because remember we are saying here that risk is a potential for uh, unfavorable return or variability of return on investment here there is no variation we expected 20 you earned 20 percent so there is no risk so in simple terms that's how we can define risk risk is the potential for unfavorable return where there is no um, uh, variability in expected return then there is no risk or such an investment or an asset is risk free meaning free of risk meaning free of variability in expected returns so we'll move ahead and uh, uh, look at the components 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 of risk components of risk now risk can generally be categorized into two one the systematic risk and two the unsystematic risk the unsystematic risk when you combine both the systematic risk and the unsystematic risk you get what we call the total total risk so total risk is equal to the systematic systematic uh, risk plus the unsystematic risk the main components systematic risk and number two and systematic risk giving us the total risk the total risk so we will now answer the question what is systematic risk what is the meaning of systematic risk now the dictionary defines systematic as um, acting according to a fixed plan or system acting according to a fixed plan or system a risk simply means i mean systematic means acting according to a plan or system now in this context then systematic means systematic risk systematic risk is the risk that is caused caused by factors beyond the control of individual investors they are known as system factors system factors system factors is the uncertainty inherent the uncertainty the uncertainty inherent in the whole system or economy or market okay this is risk that um, individual investors have no control over for example the political factors risk that is caused by political factors if the political system is upset then uh, 
the losses, the variability in returns that may result from political instability may affect all the players in that country or industry. And the individual businesses have no control over such factors because it affects the whole system, the whole system. Then there could also be um, economic factors, economic factors. When, for example, a country is going through recession, that recession affects all the players in the economy, all the companies, all the individuals, so, so that uh, mm, the individual investors do not have control over such factors. So these are system factors. So the variability in returns that is caused by such factors that individual investors do not have control over, they are known as the, it's known as system risk, system risk. So I've given just two examples. We could have social factors, social factors. For example, change in preference of uh, consumers, the general change in preference, then that would uh, lead to systematic risk, systematic risk. Then, uh, having answered systematic risk, then we can now answer the question, what is an systematic risk? Now, unsystematic risk is the opposite of uh, systematic risk. This is the opposite of systematic risk. And systematic risks are those risks that are unique to individual investors or companies. Those are uh, risks that are, can be avoided. Those are risks that can be diversified, as opposed to systematic risks where diversification may not be possible. If the country, the entire country is going through recess. You cannot diversify your investments because all businesses are going through tough times. There are low returns which are posted by all companies or industries in that country. So you cannot diversify. But for unsystematic risk, these are risks that can be diversified. These are risks that are caused by factors specific to the company and um, specific to the company uh, issuing the securities. If a company is issued, the company is issuing the securities, the, uh, the anti-systematic risk is specific to that company. For example, the financial risks. We can give examples, number one, even before financial, you have the business risks. Business risk is an example of um, unsystematic risk. We have two financial risk. Financial risk is another good example of unsystematic risk. And we are saying is specific to the company offering the financial assets. For example, securities. So, now, uh, what is business risk? So, business risk is also known as operating risk and is related to what we call the earnings before interest and tax. Earnings before interest and tax. And these risks... Uh, the operating risk or the business risk is associated or comes as a result of the way in which a firm organizes its funds. The way a firm decides to organize its funds in generating revenue, earnings before interest and tax. 
there are those companies that invest a lot in the fixed costs. So there are two main categories of costs, fixed costs and variable costs. Fixed costs and variable costs. The, if a company, for example, invests a lot in fixed costs and businesses, the business does not, does not perform well, then there is a risk of variability in returns. There is risk of variability in returns where there is, there is high fixed costs and low business. So uh, business risk, I've said, is also called operating risk. And it arises due to the chances of variability in return caused by a firm's decision to or pattern of usage of funds. Because every business, establish, uh, every business establishment mobilizes funds and uses funds for its business operations. For example, a company may have, um, uh, one company may have used a large portion of its funds on fixed assets, while another company may have used only a small proportion of its funds on fixed assets and the balance on current assets. So firms choose. So if you invest more in fixed assets and the company is not performing well, they are low profits, then there is that uh, chance or potential for variability in returns. Then there is this uh, uh, financial risk financial risk. What is financial risk? Financial risk is an example of unsystematic risk. It's a good example of unsystematic risk. So what is financial risk? Now we need to appreciate that uh, all companies use both equity and debt capital. Companies have a choice of using equity or debt capital. Equity or debt capital. So a company that has a um, high level of debt within its capital structure has exposure to what we call financial risk, is exposed to financial risk because debt capital has a fixed um, rate of return. So if you borrow money from uh, uh, debenture holders or bond holders, then there is uh, an obligation for the company to pay the uh, interest on the borrowed funds. So uh, the debt capital, um, I'm repeating, is interest bearing. In respective of the prospects of the business, interest on capital must be paid. Irrespective of the performance of the business, then interest has to be paid. In other words, interest payable is fixed for a given amount of debt capital irrespective of the volume of business. And if that is the case, then the company may be exposed to financial risk. That's why I normally say a company is in financial crisis because the company has borrowed money but may not be able to repay may not able to pay interest, may not able to service the loans, so the company may run into financial risk, which is a good example of unsystematic risk. This risk is controllable. Company has a choice of raising funds or raising capital through um, the ownership securities like shares, preference, uh, share capital and so on. So financial risk is a, an unsystematic risk because the capital structure is in the purview of the management. The management um, has the power to decide on the capital structure. So this risk is unsystematic. 
it is the management that chooses to have debt within the capital structure. Remember, there are two main sources of raising capital. There are two main sources, just to remind you. That is uh, equity, equity and debt, equity and debt. You have seen the financial risk is related to debt, financial risk. So a company that has debt within its capital structure, if a company has debt within its capital structure, we say that company is levered. That's a levered company. Where a company has no debt within its capital structure, then that company is termed as unlevered. Unlevered farm or levered farm. It may also be termed as geared. You can say that farm is geared or ungeared. If there is a high proportion of debt within the capital structure of a company, then we say that company is highly geared or highly levered. If the proportion of debt to equity is low, then we'll say that company is lowly geared, lowly geared. Remember, we are talking about capital structure, the capital structure, the total, cap total capital of a firm will be equal to the uh, equity capital plus the debt capital. So, for example, if a company has 1 million or 10 million equity shares, ordinary share capital, and zero debt within its capital structure, then such a firm is unlevered. It is unlevered. But if a firm has, say, uh, say, 5 million plus 6 million, then this firm is levered. The firm is levered. The firm is geared. And you can see here it's highly geared because the proportion of uh, debt to equity is high. So such a firm is highly geared. So where a firm uh, is highly geared, highly levered, then it runs into what we call, it may run into what we call financial risk, which is the potential um, for unfavorable return. If the business doing not doing well, if the economy may be running into recession, that company may not be able to repay the borrowers or the lenders, thereby causing what we call financial, running into financial risk. So in a nutshell, um, that's the distinction between systematic risk and unsystematic risk. And with that, we come to the end of our introductory lesson in and under the topic introduction to risk and return where we've introduced the concept of risk we say that risk is uh, the potential for unfavorable returns in fine in, in finance we said risk has a special meaning and that meaning is uh, uh, the variability of returns on investment it is the potential for um, unfavorable happening, which may be return, unfavorable return. And we have also seen that there are two components of risk, that is the systematic risk and the unsystematic risk. So with that, we hope to meet you in our next lesson. Thank you.
and God bless. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to get yourself a copy of our professionally prepared study text and revision partners. Visit our shop along Tomboya Street, Pioneer House, 3rd floor, opposite fire station.